And welcome back, everybody. Another edition here of the Auburn Undercover Podcast. My name is Nathan King. We are here today on the pregame pod as Auburn gets set to come back home against Ole Miss, 6 p.m. Central. Inside Jordan-Hare Stadium should be an awesome game, awesome environment for a lot of different reasons. Obviously, there's tons of connections between these two teams. And to talk a little bit about that and to preview the Rebels on the pregame pod, we bring in Tyler Comis, who is over there at Inside the Rebels over on the 24-7 Sports Network. Tyler has been on here a couple times before. Hopefully, you guys read his Q&A about the team earlier this week. Tyler, how has the season treated you so far over there in Oxford? So far, I mean, it's been pretty good. A little bit, you know, eerie feeling the last year, you know, hot start. But then they started to kind of fall off there towards the end. So uh, right now, but, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a different feel just because of the quality of wins compared to last year. I mean, you know, to put it simply, I mean, they kind of started out with a cupcake schedule last year. So it, it was really hard to read anything till you know, SEC play got rolling. Yeah, and that schedule last year included – a bad Auburn team in Oxford this year. It's a, it has a little bit different of a feeling. Auburn is still not where they want to be. They're now 0 and three in the league. Um, but before we get into that game, I do want to ask a little bit about just the mood overall in Oxford, trying to just set the table a little bit for what's going on at one of Auburn's division rivals. Lane Kiffin is a guy that Auburn fans are going to continue to love to hate um, for the next <laughs> few years even though he did nothing wrong except be involved in a coaching search. Like, it's not like <laughs> I don't know how much he should be blamed for anything, but they're going to keep doing it because it's fun to do with Kiffin. But, you know, it seemed like in listening to what players said after the game, Kiffin said after they lost to Alabama, that was when they felt like, because of how Bama was this year, how how well-built old this old Miss roster is, they felt like that's one they could get. I was impressed, though, because I kind of read those comments after the game. I was like, man, are they are they done after this game? Like, they seem so dejected. They turn around, though, impressively. I know those two games were at home, but you beat Arkansas, you beat LSU, and you get back on track, and now you're still a top 15 team. Talk about how that team, you know, the mentality a little bit. They bounce back from a game that I know for Kiffin and these players, that was tough to swallow when they went to Tuscaloosa. Oh, my God, yeah, for sure. Again, just with the last year stuff, I mean, I, I think people were just really panicking. Like, is this going to, you know, throw away the whole season again? Or, you know, how's the team going to respond this time? And, and even since August, we heard, you know, Jackson Dart just saying it was a different team. They're going to handle adversity different. And, you know, I guess they really showed that when they were thrown adversity early in the season, losing that first SEC game. But the mood's completely changed since then. I feel like, I mean, they're confident. And, you know, when when they look back or, you know, ask if they're happy, they, they kind of do go back to that Alabama game like, damn, we, we really should have won that game, especially with, you know, how they responded the next two games, beating a a really tough LSU team that they probably weren't supposed to. And, you know, they, they gave up seven, seven touchdowns that game, their worst defensive showing up to this point. But, you know, in that fourth quarter, they got two stops and one to get the offensive ball back for the game winning drive. And then, you know, ultimately the the stop that won them the game. So, I mean, they're confident, but I mean, they're not going to overlook anybody. I don't know if you guys, if you are Auburn fans of comments of what defenders have been saying about the offense, but, they're, they're just not going to overlook anyone at this point, whether it's Auburn or, or ULM. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start there. We'll, we'll kind of throw it around because, it's, you know, Lane Kiffin, offense, Jackson Dart, Judkins, everyone wants to talk about that. We'll get to it. But I am interested in this Ole Miss defense because, like you said, and first of all, Lane Kiffin brought it up this week in his press conference when he was asked about how bad Auburn was on offense, or excuse me, how much LSU was able to score in that game and Auburn's issues on defense. And he was like, we don't, we know firsthand experience don't really pay attention to what happens to your defense when you play LSU just kind of just kind of throw that one out because you're right you know, obviously LSU was able to kind of you know throw it around the yard against Ole Miss but it's been at least from the outside looking in it's been key stops for this defense whether it's LSU whether it's Arkansas Tulane they had a couple good ones in that game that really kind of propelled them it seems like under Pete Golding this is an improved defense I, I've liked the players they've had over the past couple years it just really seems like they haven't been able to throw it together. Maybe this is the year where they start to get that going. Talk about that side of the ball because that is, I think, where Auburn is going to – I mean, they have to succeed. They, this passing game has to get better against Ole Miss. How good is Ole Miss on defense? How well do you expect this defense to play on Saturday? You know, I think they match up pretty well uh, just from what we've seen from, you know, six-game sample size from from each guy, from each team. Um, you know, it, it's a new-look defense. They, they really – hit a lot of home runs in the transfer portal with 
Dejon Anthony, uh, John Sa Saunders Jr., um, you know, their true freshman linebackers, Centarian Perkins. And, and I mean, it really just keeps going on. Um, there are a few ret key returners like J.J. Pegues, uh, you know, you guys are familiar with, uh, Cedric Johnson to and, and DeAndre Prince, to name a few. But um, they've looked completely different. I think they've changed their scheme a lot. They really run more of a 4-3 four, four, um, front most times, and, and it's been working out well. Sometimes a 3-2 three, three, and, and then, you know, fill up the, um, the secondary. But it, 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 they, they really haven't had a hiccup other than that one LSU game. Um, the, the interceptions, you know, they don't really pop out. I think they're somewhere in the middle with, with five in the, in the league, but the, the fumbles, the, the punts, they've just been forcing a whole, whole lot more of those. Um, and I think Golden's been the biggest transfer addition, if you will, uh, for this Ole Miss team, honestly, this year. And, and arguably, I would say uh, they might be better on that side of the ball than offense. And, and that can be a scary sight if the two ever get on the same page for, you know, the same weekend because it, it usually – it takes its turn for whatever reason. Just quickly before we move on, I do want to ask just for Auburn fans because, you know, J.J. Pegues and Ladarius Tennyson, uh, they did good things when they were here at Auburn. How are they doing this season and, uh, and kind of how have they progressed since they arrived on campus last year? Yeah, um, Ladarius Tennyson. I mean, he's he's actually made the move to linebacker. I'm not sure what he played at um, at Auburn. I'm guessing safety, though. Yeah, he uh, was like a nickel safety guy. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yes, he's made the full transformation to linebacker. So, I mean, he's more of a rotational piece at this point. Because, and, and honestly, I, I didn't hit on it, but the whole defense as a whole, I think a, another big thing is like they're so deep at in you know every level of the field. It's you know, it's constant rotation, constant fresh legs. Um, so Tennyson, he's he's been a good open field tackler for them. He's really excelled. I think he's seen his most snaps when Ole Miss plays a mobile quarterback, and he's played that spiral. He he did um, a really good job against um, Jalen Milrow in in Tuscaloosa, and, and Pegues. You know, he he really does. He barely takes plays off. He's still you know in some goal line packages on on offense as well. And uh, he's the you know lead blocker on those, but uh, as of late, he's been dealing with an ankle injury. Going into Arkansas, we we did see him um, in a in a boot actually, um, the you know the Tuesday leading up to that game. But he he's he looks 100. percent He told us he was even 100 percent that game, um, and that it was just precautionary stuff. So the, I'm saying. Pegues, he's 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 got a high snap count and and all things considered, the stats might not show it, but he's definitely got a big impact on the game. Just kind of glossing over, I guess, your comment there on the defense at times this season has been ahead of the offense. What what makes you because obviously Auburn fans and, and everybody in college football, unless you watch Ole Miss religiously, kind of from the outside, you're just expecting the same explosive and efficient offense they've had for the past few years. I know they're really good this year. I think they're eighth in scoring offense, but what makes you, what makes you make that comment about, about their offense this season? Good question. Um, and you know, the offense too, I mean, I guess the fourth quarter execution on both sides of the ball has just been a lot better than what we've seen in years past. Um, but I, I think I just got to, I got to lean towards that defense a little bit. You said it too, Lane, there were a lot of like crucial fourth quarter stops and if they don't and if they didn't get those I mean there's just no shot they were winning the game uh like LSU I mean yeah they gave up a lot of points but when it mattered the most they got off the field and and you know broke up the game winning pass to um I think his name is Brian Thomas the other stud receiver over there and then LSU I'm I mean sorry Arkansas uh two weeks ago they only had 36 total rushing yards and that's and that's been a team that's been able to run all over Ole Miss, you know, ever since Lane Kiffin took over the reins, honestly. So I think that was pretty impressive. Talking about uh, talk about Jackson Dart at quarterback. This is something I asked you in in our Q and A. I mean, Auburn was in it for Spencer Sanders at least a little bit. They at least kicked the tires. They bring him in. Maybe that's not super surprising to have an experienced guy, and then. Walker Howard is a former, you know, top flight recruit. He comes over as well. 
it was at least from the outside looking in and and I'm I'm sure when you're there talking to these coaches every day it makes a lot more sense but um it almost wasn't didn't seem super sensible Kiffin's plan it was, it was, we were kind of r- wondering what was going on there but then all the way back to the preseason I remember hearing him talking about Jackson Dart and the way he's been progressing because I was I, I was wondering who was going to win the job because there were times from Dart last year where it wasn't it wasn't great um what Absolutely. has he done this season to really take control I know there's no question right now he's the starting quarterback but what has he done this season to improve? I know he's shown a lot of areas that have really been uh, been positive this season. And what does he need to do on Saturday? Because I know home and road splits for him in his career, I know haven't been haven't been the best. I know he's usually a lot better at home. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, Kiffin, you know, stirred the pot a little bit. You know, they add one quarterback. You know, a lot of Ole Miss fans are like, "All right, we can get behind this." And then they add um, Walker Howard, and it's like. Oh man, what are, like what are we doing? What's next for Dart? Is he gonna you know hit the door soon, or what are we doing? And it, it was a battle all throughout August. All out, you know. Honestly, uh, Sanders. I think Sanders won the spring. I think it was a really close um, fall camp, and it's kind of surprising. I think, and another reason why I think this deep kind of going back to that other question, this defense, we saw Jackson Dart and Sanders turn over the ball a lot in the in the fall and on it or sorry during fall camp and I, I was skeptical a little bit coming into the season how they'd respond to that but it turns out the defense you know is just that good I guess but and I think you know <laughs> relating that back to this question I think that's helped Dart tremendously um because he's taking much better care of the football and I think that's the department they really honed in on because it, it was an issue last year for sure especially in key moments so uh, taking care of the football, developing as a leader, really taking over this team, and and just comfortability in year two of this offense has really uh, boded well for him. And I think that extra year in the offense with in-game experience ultimately helped him give him give him an edge over Spencer Sanders. And, and the lat and something else I'll add about Sanders, you know, people, especially you know during the bye week and coming into this week uh, more so, they're like. Man, how big was it that we kept uh, Sanders away from Auburn, like you were saying? So, yeah, because they've, you know, Auburn hasn't necessarily, I think it's been a trend around college football, maybe not necessarily. I know Devin Leary at Kentucky hasn't been necessarily lighting the world on fire. Then yeah. Graham Mertz, who nobody really expects to be good at Florida, is now one of the better quarterbacks in the country. Yeah, I mean, Auburn had to go get an experienced guy, but the, the results haven't been great for them so far. Sticking on the offensive side of the ball, you know, Jake Thornton, I know, was a huge part of this team's success running the ball. He is now at Auburn. I want to ask about, obviously, this running game. Judkins is a guy that everyone should know. Auburn fans, in particular, know a lot about because he would have, I mean, at least me personally, knowing some of the stuff from recruiting, he would have really liked to have come here, but they didn't show a lot of interest in him. I love Ulysses Bentley. I've loved him ever since he was, when Tank Bigsby was at Auburn as a freshman, breaking a bunch of freshman records you looked at the standings and Ulysses Bentley as a freshman at SMU was like the other guy that was doing great stuff. So they've got a, they've got a couple good running backs there. Even with Zach Evans gone, talk to me about how successful or not successful in different spots. That run game has been this season because Auburn's run defense has been good. Not great. It's, it's pretty solid. I would expect them to play pretty well at home in that area. Yeah, no doubt. I think that's going to be honestly a pretty big um, area in the matchup where, you know, Auburn could ultimately win it. Uh, because it the first month of the season, I mean, it it was uh, pitiful. I mean, they you know Judkins wasn't even I, he couldn't even crack over seventy yards till um, you know the LSU game, and he exploded then. But you know the last two games, they've um, it, it's been the first they've run for one hundred fifty yards in back to back weeks. I mean, the Georgia Tech week, even that I think was a little misleading. They they ran for three hundred, but. I mean, it was really dark just running all over the field because, I mean, the offensive line going into that, I mean, that that also had some serious question marks, you know, going into LSU, giving up five sacks um, in Tuscaloosa. And, and there were a lot of question marks around uh, that area. John Garrison, their new offensive line coach who took over for uh, Jake Thornton. Um, and we, we were talking to Jeremy James during the bye week and someone asked about Jake Thornton. And he said, yeah, I'm sure he's going to be telling the guys on, on defense, giving them tips. He's good at this. He's good at that. Um, 
but the the run game is going to be a key. Everyone knows Quinchon Junkins, like you said, especially over there. And I, I think the name to watch really is is Ulysses Bentley. He's kind of the lightning in the bottle. Judkins is the guy that's going to you know ground and pound and, and wear down a defense. Um, and he's been he's been seeing a little bit more of a workload as of late, and it's it's translated um, really well because you know anytime he's getting nine plus carries, he's He's gotten 90 yards in back-to-back games, and and this offense, like I said, you know, first first time they've gone back-to-back weeks where at least 150 rushing yards, and you know, uh, in the past in Kiffin's tenure, that that's kind of been like expected uh, in a way. So they're they're starting to pick up the right momentum. We'll see where they're at uh, after a bye week, though. Yeah, I think Auburn fans are going to be a little bit scarred in terms of going against great receivers because they just did it. <laughs> against Malik Neighbors and, and Brian Thomas, and they did whatever they wanted. I understand Trey Harris, he, I mean, it was awesome the first few weeks of the season. He is still out with an injury. What are the other injuries on this team right now? So, yes, great question. Um, so Trey Harris, he actually had knee surgery, Lane Kiffin told us, uh, following the two-lane game, which is when he got hurt. And he's actually been playing uh, ever – he only missed Georgia Tech – he played against Alabama in a very limited fashion. Played um, played against LSU and Arkansas, and and he had uh, 150 yards against LSU. So he he seems like he's recovering. He's been recovering pretty well, um, and the bye week should benefit him greatly. But during the bye week, Ole Miss um, suffered an injury during during one of the practices on Tuesday to Jordan Watkins, their leading uh, receiver yards wise, um, a hand injury. You know, we've been hearing broken hand, but we're we're not too confident to for sure say that. Um, and based on some of the things, I was just on the phone with our other guy Jared, and he heard that he was practicing, and and Lane Kiffin told us he's playing this week. Um, but you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't sure how much I believed that, just because I mean, it was the first week they cut off media availability on on a Tuesday. Uh, for the first time all season, they, they hadn't done that before. And and that just initially led me to believe that there's no way he's playing. He wants to, you know, keep his cards close to his chest as he does, especially with injuries. Um, but apparently he's been practicing with a removable, a brace apparently, not a cast, nothing like that. So he's a true, I think, game time decision this upcoming weekend. And he's been a huge part of the offense, a huge part of their third down success, third and fourth down success. Yeah, so that's somebody for Auburn fans to watch in, in warm-ups for sure on on Saturday. A couple injuries to their receivers. One of the guys could be out. Um, kind of I just want to finish out here and just get maybe a couple keys to the game. If it's if it's things we've already talked about, feel free to feel free to go over it again. But things that you think if if you're waking up on a Sunday morning and Ole Miss has won this game, what are a couple things they have done well? And then if they don't do them well, maybe Auburn would have an, an opportunity to to win this game. I know that you, know, you and I, I think, are on the same page here that uh, picking Ole Miss to win the game. Um, but what are the couple biggest factors of, for success for them on Saturday? I think the uh, some big factors uh, will start offensively. I mean, taking care of the quarterback, he's, he, you know, like I said, that first month of the year, they were really shaky at offensive line. And, you know, I, I, just on based on some of the things I heard, they were even – willing to move some things around which would have been huge um but ultimately they didn't they've been they've been holding them upright so i think offensively if Ole Miss were to get the edge to take care of jackson dart and the run game's got to get going defensively i'd say stop they they would have stopped the run really well some an area where auburn's been excelled this year and and really limiting that and and forcing them to throw the ball to win the game um, I, I would say those are, were the biggest keys: stopping the run, protecting the quarterback, and obviously getting to to Thorn and and uh, Ashford. Yeah, you feel like I mean, when Auburn almost beat Georgia, they ran for two nineteen, and so it didn't. Grant that wasn't enough. The only touchdowns they had in that game were off turnovers, and so it's not like they drove the field, but they had an opportunity, I think, offensively to compete in that game because, like you said, it wasn't all on Thorn. Because when it has been all on Thorin this season, it's not been pretty because they, they've really, really struggled. So, yeah, I think that's probably accurate from you as well. I, I think Auburn has to run. I was just you know, on with, with Brad Logan for y'all's podcast, and I said yeah. Auburn has to run for 150 at least 
in this game, probably maybe closer to 200. Um, Because again, I just, I think Auburn's defense is good. I think the LSU game, give them a mulligan. I mean, a little bit, there were some issues there, but I think they'll hold up well against Ole Miss, but I think 31 points, you know, 28 points, I think that's still holding up well. I think you just, as long as you don't let them explode, so you've got to go in there and score 34 points to win this game. Can Auburn do that? I have my doubts, but at the same (laughs) time, this is a game where, I mean, you and I were talking about before we got rolling, this is, this should be an awesome environment. I mean, this is, other than Georgia and Alabama, which always end up being this kind of game for Auburn, this is exactly what you want. There's so many factors. Um, how do Ole Miss fans feel about Hugh Freeze and 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 going up against him in the SEC again? Do they even care now that they've got another another good coach? I mean, is there any sort of animosity? Do they? I understand a lot of them really like Hugh Freeze for what he did there. What's you know, yes. is there any sort of mood on that from you? Yes, there is. I mean, you know, I actually asked that question on our board, um, and it got a big response. Seventy replies of you know passionate people. I'll give you a little bit of the responses. Some of them. You know, there were a couple that said um, they would welcome him back with open arms. But, you know, from what they've seen from Lane Kiffin, they've kind of changed their moods a little bit. And some of them, like you said, they said, you know, we don't, we he's in the rear, 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 rear view mirror and, and we're not really paying attention to him anymore. Um, some of them, you know, they get into religion and, and, and some of the recruiting things. And that's not really what I was looking for because, I mean, we – we've all heard about that stuff. You know, I wanted to know what they knew about him, you know, I guess a little bit more personally, but I mean, overall some mixed reviews. Um, But I think they're happy with who they got now and happy. They kept uh, ultimately were able to keep Lane Kiffin away from Auburn because that was a big thing last year. I know as you remember. Oh, definitely. Uh, You and I were exchanging texts a lot during that, uh, during that crazy month, I think I think the two coaches on the sideline on Saturday were the two. I don't I don't think actually I know they were the two coaches at the end of this search for Auburn. And so, um, yeah. you know, like I like we were saying, like it's I said this to Brad. It's Kiffin is always going to generate. Now, when they go to like Tennessee, that's understandable, but he's always going to generate this like you love to hate him sort of feeling for opposing coaches because like I mean Auburn. Their, their fans are going to boo him and well, whenever they get the opportunity. And, like, obviously that's a reason they will be charged up for this game. But he didn't do anything other than, like, try to leverage a job or, like, get another – like, he didn't do anything wrong. He was just in a coaching search. So it's, like, it is funny that there's that kind of, like, you know, animosity toward it. But um, it should make for a great – should make for a great environment. Tyler, thank you so much for Absolutely. hopping on today. At Tyler Comis, K-O-M-I-S. You guys can follow him on Twitter, all kinds of great stuff over there at Inside the Rebels. I'm sure our listeners really, really appreciated your insight on here today. If you guys enjoyed this show, go leave us a five-star review. That is the number one thing you can do to help us. Bumper music is by Beats by Mordecai, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram. You guys can follow him. Till the next episode, which will be after the game. Catch you guys later. Everybody enjoy the game on Saturday night, and we will talk to you all soon.